Hi everyone, it's Justin the Gardener here. I'd like to thank you for visiting my video today. I hope you enjoy watching it. So we're talking a little bit about spring in my garden. Obviously it's a really, really busy time. There's lots happening. All of a sudden everything just burst into life because before it was just a couple of weeks ago, it was snow, it was cold, it was frosty, absolutely freezing cold. As you can see, it's not cold or I don't feel like cold so much myself. And um, yeah, so I've been outside today, taking some films, um, plenty to see. It's very early, there's still lots to come, lots to happen. Tulips aren't quite out yet, but they're coming and lots of daffodils too. So this looking really, really, really pretty. And so yeah, hope you enjoy this video. So here we are in the back garden. It's not a, not big as some gardens go, but it's fair size, plenty to look after. And I often think the smaller the garden, the harder it is to maintain it and to make it look really good because you see everything all of the time. So as you can see just behind me here, the little bee houses, and these are full of mason bees. And the mason bees, they come out in about May time, as you can see on here. This little tube is packed full of little bees and it's waiting to emerge when the springtime comes. So yes, I'm really looking forward to seeing those again because we actually have hundreds of them. The whole wall is buzzing. You may have noticed I like statues, particularly classical ones, good quality ones. And lots of the time you see them in garden centres and places are not really very nice. They've not got any really nice details, but this one I found in our village reclamation place. Now, I studied this statue, I saw it quite a while ago, and I thought, oh, can I afford her, can I not afford her? I thought, oh, I've got to have her. So I did, I bought her, and she was only 25 pounds, so I mean, it wasn't exactly a, a huge expense, but she was worth every penny. Let's look how she looks here with these narcissus. I think these are February gold or jet fire. I can't quite remember, because I've lost the label. But isn't she beautiful? This is Ruth. On the Bible story, here you can see she's got her sheath of corn. Looking very demure and thoughtful. And she does actually bring a lot of peace to the garden. And I love having her here. She's like a friend. Yeah. Look at the state of that lawn. I'm really going to have to do some hard work on that. But I will get it back in no time whatsoever. Now if you look to the left here, you will see one of my pride and joys is the wisteria. Look at that, it's 40 years old. I won't say how old it is because I remember when it was planted. <laughs> so look at all these twisting branches. It goes all the way up here to the roof all the way around and it makes a big canopy around the other side so 
in a few weeks it's going to be absolutely bursting with flowers in fact you can just see the buds appearing now it tends to do better on the other side and can put all its energy into growing rather than flowering but there's a fair few buds to come we just hope we don't get any late frosts because that usually is devastating you end up with nothing so yeah you can see it goes all the way around here and all the way around over there I'll show you it more later. He's, this is Rusty the Peacock. Now Rusty's had seen better days. He's lived in the garden for about three years, but he's sadly declining. His little tail's coming off. But I still think he looks pretty. It may last another year, but I may have to do some maintenance on him to keep him alive. Uh, so. Now this is one of my favorite violas. It's a really unusual color. This is called Honey Bee. I found this at a local garden centre. Look there, I need to do some deadheading. Take these off. Yeah. It's a lovely colour, it's such a warm glow. And Honey Bee is a perfect name for it. Just look at that colour. Gorgeous. Of all the things in the garden, this is my favourite. I found this at a local reclamation centre. No, it's not an antique. It has the look of one, so I planted it up a couple of weeks ago when it was snowing and frosty. And everything's doing okay. We have a zebra striped polyanthus here. Look at that colour. Reminds me of Delftware in the um, plate. Yeah, from look at that. It fits in really well. My slightly classical themed garden. I think the spaces are a bit frightening. <laughs> now this is another favourite plant of mine. This is called Cleone. It's, um, it survives the winter quite okay, but this year I've kept it in a small but heated greenhouse, but not heated very much. And you can see how many flowers it's got coming. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At least 10 there. So I shall give this a feed and watch it flower. It's also called a poor man's orchid because it's um, not, tr not a true orchid, but it looks like one, so it's really, really pretty. So in lots of gardens you have an eye catcher now. I don't quite think the pot works on top, but when it's grown you don't see the pot because the foliage covers it and the flowers, but in the winter you do, so, but we don't come out here much anyway. So this is the plinth. Now it acts as an eye catcher, so wherever you stand in the garden or from the house, you see it. So when you come through the gate behind me, you'll see the plinth. And when you look out the windows, you see the plinth. And it acts as a focal point from two or three locations, so it's really well placed. I am actually going to move it back two or three feet, because this corner here has just been renovated. As you can see, it's a bit of a mess, but it will be coming soon and looking beautiful again. So this is my good friend, Helen. Now Helen's lived in this garden quite a long time now. She originally was in another garden, or actually two gardens. She belonged to my good friend, Barbara, who is sadly no longer here. And I met Barbara through a care group in our village when she needed some help, and my mum used to help her. And I went around to see her one day and said, oh, she wanted a gardener, so I did a bit of work for her. And over the years, we became really good friends. And sadly, when she passed away, I um, was given the statue. I thought, what a lovely gesture to remember a really good friend by. So Helen lives here now. She's much appreciated as she was originally. She's in a smaller garden now, but I think she looks just as beautiful.
so here we have some seeds that have started growing. Silibum maritimum, good name that one. Um, now I haven't put labels in these, but these are actually pansies, fru fru. There in this top here is all my new seed packets I keep for reference. And uh, here's some things. We're going to grow some wildflowers for the meadow behind me. So these oxide daisies, but as you see, not quite yet coming through. Got a ringium, silver ghost here. Got some geranium pretense, which is a wildflower, English wildflower native. We have some seeds here I've got from home. This is Lavendula Betty's Blue seeds, and they may not come true, I'm not sure, but I don't mind because they look pretty. Um, Named after my grandma, um, well, not the plant isn't, but I bought them in memory of my grandma Betty. And some foxgloves here, foxy mixed, which are supposed to flower in the same year, but it may be a while yet. Looking at the size of them, have a loop in here, Lunaria annua. Just one coming through, I think they do better outside to be honest. As you can see, there's another tray of them there. Aquilegia is not yet showing. Lupinus perennius, I think that's it. Perennius is the blue one. There's one coming through. They're supposed to take forever to um, germinate, apparently, but I found that they came up in a few days. Yeah, so here's all the nice old pots. The compost bins behind there. Here's some leaves. Um, Echeveria, I think they are. And I'll grow all these from one plant. As you can see down here, I have some leaves. And if you leaves come off, because these often get attacked by vine weevils and they just fade away and the plant dies. But what you do, you put the leaves in a tray to dry on their own, not in a tray of compost. Wait a few weeks and then eventually you stop, put little shoots come out and then the new plant will grow from the, soup, from the little shoot there. And you've got lots of babies, so from one dead plant you can propagate so many. These will all go out when it's a bit warmer and a little bit less wet. Yeah, so you can see the greenhouse is Fairly well populated, not as well populated as it will be, and uh, it's going to be bursting with life. Oh, look, I didn't mention this. This is a wisteria I bought, it was um, in the throwaway section at the garden centre. So, give it a home, and it should do well. Wisteria sinensis, prolific, and I'm not short of walls here for it to grow on, so it's going to look really, really nice. And the beautiful old pots. No plastic waste there. There is plastic here, but we use the pots all the time. So yeah, thank you for visiting the greenhouse. And there's the wall garden. Well, as you can see, it's absolutely throwing it down. I've had to give up for today. It's too wet, but it does look rather nice. It'll help everything grow.
And now, just look at the garden. You wouldn't think it was the same day. So I'm back at the little house now, and in my own little garden. And as you can see, it's still looking very pretty and very well watered. Well, what a day it's been. It started off perfectly beautiful, perfect spring day. Did a couple of hours in the garden and absolutely the heavens opened and I got absolutely drenched. So I've come back home now and it's nice and sunny again outside. I'm having to squint again because the sun's so bright. And before I go, I just want to show you this. I ended up at a garden centre by surprise yesterday. And of course I came back with something I didn't want or need, but here we are. It's a, an Ipatians Niamnia menensis. And it's also called the parrot plant. Now this is, I think it's from Brazil. So it should look really nice in the garden in the summer. Bought it as a house plant really, but as you can see, three stems in there, so three individual plants. I'm not sure if we're going to keep them together or separate them, but we'll have to see, see how it grows. And when the weather's a bit warmer, it can go outside, so yeah. So I'm really grateful for you watching my video and following me on YouTube. If you have anything to say or want to know anything else, please write below in the comments if you can. Um, yeah, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.